So hello everyone, this is Christian Zasse, Zasse Photo. We're back again, it's Friday. We're going to start very soon, it's just a few minutes to go. Um, for those who, are, who don't know me, I do these channels completely voluntary together with my team. Um, we do them on for the conservation of wildlife, mainly focusing on raptors. So we have very much concentrated on North America. We once went to Europe, actually, and this time it's very. I'm very pleased to tell you, thanks to Nicole, that we're going to go to South America and learn something from Argentina. We have an incredibly interesting guest. So hold your breath and we'll start very soon. I'm going to mute it now, so just enjoy and look at the map of Argentina. We'll start very soon. Yes, I do see it, but I can't talk at the moment because I'm just on sign. Okay. Hello everyone, it's Friday again. I'm very pleased to be back. Uh, as you know, last week we were with the ornithological, that's a difficult word, I learned the ornithological, say it a few times, at the conference uh, which takes place every four years, it's the IOC, and the next one will be in Melbourne, as far as I understand. It's been incredibly interesting. Actually, there were biologists from all over the world, experts. It was a fantastic time I've had there. I've got a few more interviews for you lined up. Well, today I'm very pleased, thanks to Nicole, who made an incredible good catch here, I must say. Very nice. We're going to go to Argentina, and we're going to uh, talk about two very rare species of eagles. I certainly don't know anything about them, so it's going to be very interesting to hear from Dr. Juan Manuel Grande. Uh, he's got a very interesting background. He's been all around the world. He's even been to Canada, so I thought... <laughs> <laughs> there's much he does, there's little he doesn't know, <laughs> which is very interesting. So he he's going to talk a bit about the black and chestnut eagle, which is a uh, a very rare type of eagle, very interesting. And the other one we're going to hear about is the charcoal eagle, which is the crown solitary eagle, both uh, in the areas of um, South America. So I'm just going to get myself out of the way and just show you quickly on the map where we are. One second, let's just get me out of the way here. Okay, so um, let's just get this. So there is a big map of Argentina. He is in Santa Rosa, uh, which is right there. Argentina is very flat. It's exceptionally flat. Uh, so Buenos Aires is, of course, on the east coast here uh, of the Atlantic. And then, as you know, if you zoom out, you have the Andes going right across, uh, starting from, of course, Ecuador, Peru, all the way down Bolivia, Chile. And so, so Argentina doesn't actually have many mountains. So, I mean, my immediate question was, of course, so where are the eagles? Because either you would have eagles, you know, sea eagles, or you would have them in mountains, as far as I know. But I think uh, it's going to be very interesting to learn a lot more. So let me, uh, without further ado, I'm going to introduce you now to Dr. Juan Manuel 
Grande and um, let's get him live in Santa Rosa. Hi, um, so this is Dr. Juan Manuel Grande and now this is a long name here, the National Scientific and Technical Research Council. I can hardly say that word, it sounds very important. Tell us a bit about you. <laughs> Hello, good night to everyone. Very good. You uh, yeah, you're coming across very well. So go ahead, please. Uh, well, where do you want me to start? <laughs> well, you know, you have an interesting life. I mean, uh, you're doing incredible things here. I know the finances are very difficult in Argentina uh, at the moment. You yeah, just told me out. you told me how difficult it is to the dollar, how quickly, what incredible inflation rates you have. So living in Argentina at the moment, especially being a researcher like you dedicated to wildlife is, a, is, is certainly all but easy. Tell us a little bit about your life, about your background, where you've been, where you've done your PhD and so on. So please go okay. ahead. Yeah, I studied biology at Spain in Barcelona and Madrid. And then I did my PhD in Doñana Biological Station, which is uh, probably one of the best uh, places in the world to, to learn how to research with birds of prey. There are a lot of great scientists there. And I did my PhD with the Egyptian vulture, which is a very particular vulture is one of the few birds that use tools to, to feed. It breaks uh, ostrich eggs with stones and well, has fascinated people since the, the time of the Egyptians. There are uh, geroglyphs in the pyramids and, and the temples in Egypt showing the, this species. And I work with this vulture in, in Aragon, which is uh, in northeastern Spain. Then I moved to Canada uh, with a PhD, uh, postdoc, sorry. And, but in Canada, I just uh, did cabinet work. I went to the field a lot with the field technician of my boss, uh, the late Gary Bortolotti. It was a great researcher too, a Canadian researcher that died a few years ago, very young, fortunately. And well, in Canada, I had uh, great times with the fantastic owls you have there in winter. We went out to capture uh, snowy owls and hack owls, sowets in the summer. It was a, a very lovely time. Cold in winter. I was in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. So we had winters of minus 40 or so, but I guess in Canada, probably the people know what I'm talking about. And in the, at the same time, I did field work in the Canary Islands with uh, Eleonora's falcon, which is another astonishing raptor. That is, uh, it's a falcon that breeds in colonies in the coast, in islands or in cliffs, and it breeds after most of the, the other birds have bred. So it feeds basically on migratory passerines that they hunt over the sea they hunt in groups so it's really well it's an astonishing sight if you are in in the coast and you see a bunch of i don't know 17 or 18 falcons chasing a small passerine that tries to escape climbing desperate to to escape the falcons and then this crazy falcon moves from the canaries and uh, a bunch of islands in the mediterranean the entire population migrates in winter to Madagascar. So it's really a, a peculiar bird. It, it is also polymorphic in color. So you have one dark morph, which is a completely dark falcon, and another pale one that is similar to a hobby. And after that, I came here to, to Argentina, where um, I got a position into the, this long name you have in the in the in the screen. Right. <laughs> the National Scientific and Technical Technical Research Council, and then I started a new life here uh, of research. We started to work with a new bunch of species here. 
Right. So this is a this is an incredibly interesting uh, background, Juan Manuel, that you have. Uh, you're very knowledgeable. I was just incredibly amazed that you've also dealt with snowy owls because I we you know we they come to our area quite often, but it's always the juveniles that come. Um, so I don't know if you dealt more with juveniles. And I just saw a question there about the Egyptian vulture. It was very interesting that you said it cracks ostrich eggs, if I understood that correctly. It's very interesting. Yeah, yeah. So, so is actually the Egyptian vulture a, a um, also an endangered species or not? Um, now it is in danger. Uh, in the past, it was not considered in danger because although it has decreased a lot, it had decreased a lot in, in Europe, it still retain uh, huge populations, especially in India and, and in well in the Himalayas and some areas of Africa. But in the last 15, 15 years or so, with the crisis of vultures in India, this species has also decreased a lot there. And the late news are that also in many countries in Africa is is declining. So they changed their status to endanger a, a few years ago now. In, in Spain, for example, now its population has uh, have stabilized and in, even they are growing a bit, but in, in the rest of the world now is it's decreasing sharply. So basically because it, it dies poisoned with, uh, well, in India with the Clofenac, that Many of them died because of uh, intoxication with the clofenac. And in Africa, it's another victim of uh, an in well, intentional and unintentional poisoning of vultures. Right, I'm going to, Juan Manuel, I'm going to give you straight away a question here from Gentleman Ghost, uh, who is interested actually to know, he would love to know the health of the River Plata, especially near Buenos Aires, Montevideo. Can you comment, comment on that, please? Uh, what would... Does he want to know? He said the River Plata, the river. Yes. Uh, uh, what the health, how is the ecology of the river? Is it good uh, oh, near Buenos Aires and, and Montevideo? Yes, the river, the, the Rio de la Plata, we call it the River of the Plata, is uh, a very short river because uh, it's the result of the union of two large uh, rivers that cross most of Argentina, uh, Uruguay and Brazil, the Uruguay River and the Paraná River. So both rivers meet together, you can see there, in, in the, well, between Buenos Aires and, and Uruguay. And there is a huge industrial belt in the Paraná River and also in the Uruguay River. And also Buenos Aires has a, a huge port so it has a lot of uh, ship traffic. So now it's probably very contaminated. You know, uh, I don't know. My mother used to tell me that the people went to swimming in the river when they were a child, and now it's forbidden because of heavy contamination it has. I don't know if this answers a bit. I think the answer that answers the question sadly very well. So let's yeah. let's jump straight away to the uh, you know to, to the eagles that that, uh, uh, that that are so interesting. I'm going to show a picture here, and as far as I understand, this is the black and chestnut eagle, uh, which is so rare. Can can you tell us more about the picture, and then I will show some of the video, and we can start discussing something about this this fantastic eagle. So go ahead. Yeah, please. sure. This is a, a fledgling we banded at the nest in Jujuy, in northern Argentina. Uh, this is part of our research with the species. It's the, the only nest we have found here in Argentina of the species. The guy on, on the left is Rodrigo Araos, which is the one that found the nest. And the guy in the middle is Santiago Zuluaga, which is a PhD student that is currently doing his PhD with the species. Uh, what you see there basically is the, the fledgling that we, well, Santiago climbed the tree to, to catch the fledgling and we put a satellite transmitter on it because uh, there's almost no information on this species. Uh, uh, until a few years ago, there were only seven nests that had been described, most of them in Colombia and, and Ecuador. And 
we know almost nothing of the species. So when we found, when Rodrigo found the nest, we started a monitoring project there. Uh, we tried to ban a nestling the first year, but it was too too old and he fly away. <laughs> we, we couldn't catch him. And this is the, the, the juvenile we got the sec the second year, no, the third year, sorry. We, we have already banded two fledglings in this nest. And both of them are giving us uh, invaluable information on, on dispersal movement. Uh, the juveniles have moved just a few kilometers. The one that has moved farther has, uh, has gone only 60 kilometers from the nest, which is a very short distance. The, the older one has already two years now and he still moves very close to to its natal nest you compare it with dispersal distance of other species like i don't know golden eagles or bald eagles well even more if you consider that uh, in some areas of north america for example these species are migratory and this species is not but the dispersal distance of these species is, is very short which is a, a very interesting finding and another of the findings is that it only used up to now uh, tropical forest in subtropical forest in good uh, conservation status. So it seems that it could be a really good indicator of quality of you know, uh, subtropical forest, at least in, in the Andes in Argentina. We also have two fledglings planted in Colombia by Santiago, and mm -hmm. there the forest is has been uh, more uh, deforested, so they have uh, much less space, much less forest left. But even then, they try to use only forest. So mm -hmm. it's clear a good yeah, indicator of the quality of of subtropical forest across subtropical and tropical forest in the Andean mountains. Okay, well, let me show the uh, the viewers. Uh, you've given me so many links to so many beautiful videos. So as you talk, I'm going to blend in a video. So maybe you can tell us a little bit. So you answered actually the quest, the second question from Gentleman Ghost, who said he would like to know something about the migratory pattern of this bird, or in general, while you answered, there is very little migration, especially compared to the to, to the falcon that you were mentioning that you saw uh, on on the Caribbean yeah. that does incredible. <laughs> It's right. absolutely phenomenal what 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 these birds do. It's uh, I was yeah. by the way, Juan Manuel. I was so amazed. Uh, I, I will show that later. There was a there was study from from uh, some some Germans of some incredible migrations of uh, of of some eagles they had there that that migrate thousands of, of of kilometers all the way down to the south. Uh, east coast of Africa. It's absolutely amazing, you know, what, what, what happens. But anyway, um, so tell us a little about the behavior of this bird. This is a new project you've been in, so this is quite recent. I'm going to, yeah. as you talk, um, show the video and maybe you can comment a bit. Tell, is it aggressive? Is it easy? Does it, the, is it scared of you? Why is this a picture yeah. at night? So yeah, go on and... Um, I yeah, will... well, exactly. It's uh, the picture is at night because we climb the nest at night. Uh, the video you are putting is an RP Eagle video. It's not the one I, oh, I sent you. Oh, sorry, sorry. Okay, one <laughs> second. I got the wrong video. I beg your pardon. Exactly. Let me just see because you gave it's me a number. It's the same link, but it's before that. Okay, hang on. Let me just see. It's it's not this one, is it? No. No. It's not that one. No, it was on that web, but it was before. If you want. Uh, copy I'm again the link I sent you. Okay, hang on. I must have got something wrong. I'll let you talk in the meantime. I'm going to search for it one second. Okay. Um, no, basically, the picture mm -hmm. is at night because this eagle is extremely aggressive. So, is it this one? It, yeah, this one was it, right? Exactly, that one. Okay, good. Here we go. Here we go. So, as it is extremely aggressive, you have to climb the nest at night. Otherwise, the eagle will uh, attack you and actually kicks you. So it's a very, very aggressive eagle. This you see here is the adult, which is why it has its name, black and chestnut. It's an amazing eagle that lives in the Andes from Venezuela to Northern Argentina. This is the juvenile. We had already banded this one. And uh, one of the 
this species is in danger for several reasons, mostly because of loss of habitat that, as I told you already, has been severely cut in, especially in, in northern, in, in the north part of its distribution. But it also is persecuted because it kills, uh, oh, look at that side. It kills uh, chickens. So local people in the Andes have the chickens to have some food, some meat. And when the eagle kills their chickens, they kill the eagle. It's a, a widespread conflict, apparently. This is the one, uh, a one, which is uh, the main prey species of, of the eagle in Argentina. It's a huge, huge bird, similar to a turkey, for all of you that doesn't know it. And the eagle, well, with these ones, the eagles can feed several days. So they take the one to the fledgling, and the fledgling eats several days of this prey. And now we are working with this conflict between the, the people that live in the Andes and the eagle. We are trying to assess uh, which is the perception they have of the eagle, if they perceive the eagle is in danger or not, if they perceive the eagle is a bad species or not, and how can we change this uh, way of, of thinking if they, they actually think it's a bad species. For what we know now, in, in Argentina, uh, we made several interviews to local settlers and almost none of them knew the eagle. So we don't know why. We think it's probably because most people here in Argentina uh, are cattle ranchers, so they are not so worried about chickens because culturally what we care about is cows and meat. But in Colombia and Ecuador, the thing, uh, the, the people seems to be more dependent on, on chicken for meat. So apparently the conflict is more acute there. Right. Thank you. That's that's very interesting. So um, what, uh, just to uh, ask some more questions. And by the way, I would love the audience, please, please the viewer, the viewers. I can see Amanda, everybody here, Margaret, Jackie and so on. Hello, everyone. Of course, to my crew, too. Very nice. Sasha, I think Jani's there and so on. Very nice to have you all. But please go ahead. And this is your opportunity to ask questions. Gentleman Ghost has already asked some questions. So please go ahead. I'm just going to throw in a few questions here because... Um, you know, when you say uh, you are communicating with the farmers and they seem to be more, it's more clear that they, they don't see the eagle as, as a danger. So you, 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 are you telling us that we don't actually know what the reasons for the decline or the, the decline in population is? Or are we saying that we don't know if it's declining, we don't have enough statistics? Or um, are, are you saying there are some people who are probably killing the eagle uh, legally or illegally? I don't know what, the, um, yeah. what it is in, in um, Argentina. Maybe you can comment on that, please. Yeah, uh, actually, we don't know. Uh, we have uh, very scarce information on this species. Uh, for example, in Argentina, it was discovered in 1950s. Okay, and it was discovered because uh, one ornithologist, well, the father of ornithology in Argentina. Only in 1950, you said 1950. Yeah, That's 50, incredible. 50, sorry. There was a Swedish researcher called Klaes Olrog that was. Well, it was the father of ornithology in Argentina. He discovered one specimen in the collection of a museum. And this was the first record of the species. He then tried to, to reach to the hunter that had killed the eagle. And he learned that apparently it was killed in a nest with the, with the couple. And then two years later, another juvenile was found in another collection. So another dead specimen. And this guy that was a researcher for more than 50 years, he never saw the eagle alive. So it really escaped to, to our perception for, for many years. In fact, uh, in the 80s, it was thought that the species was extinct in Argentina. 
But then from late 80s to now, there has been uh, several records of the species in different places. So we know the species is still there, but we don't have a clue of which is the size of the, their population, for example. So this is one of the things we wanted to do. We started the interviews not to learn, uh, well, it was to learn what the people thought about the eagle, because we expected that the people that were in the field will know the, the species. So we wanted to find more nests. And we found, based on our work here in La Pampa with the other eagle, with the Chaco, uh, the Chaco eagle or crown, solitary crown eagle, here we find we find most nests asking people. You go to the ranches and ask the, the, the people that works there, the gauchos, and they tell you, okay, I've seen the eagle in that place and that other, and then you go there to look for the nest. Mm -hmm. So our idea in the north was to do the same, but what we found is that the people doesn't know the eagle. So this was a surprise. Uh, Santiago is doing a similar research in Colombia and Ecuador, and there most of the people that lives in the areas where you can find the eagles know the species. So we don't know if it, that is because it's more common in Colombia and Ecuador or because the habitat is more destroyed there and so the eagles have to go outside the, the forest to hunt and then they get in touch with people that kill them. My so actually the species is considered yeah. in danger because of this persecution and this habitat loss, but the actual information we have on the numbers of the populations or the size of their territories or how connected are different populations is well it's nil. We don't know we don't really have a clue of, of how many eagles there are there and if they are declining or not. We know several nests that were destroyed in the past because of this persecution. So it's uh, we thought that it's probably declining in, in those countries, but we really don't have good information on that. That's another point that gives relevance to our work with the species. Wow, I think you, you probably have something really unique here. Uh, very, very nice to hear that. So let me let me bring a few questions in now, Juan Manuel, for you. Uh, here's question number three from Lifelight One. Are the eagles protected like they are in the US? And I'll bring the next question. So that's about the protection, the similar to the protection endangered species uh, uh, category now. And the fourth one is from Osprey Mama. Hi, Osprey Mama. Uh, are you saying they won't use man-made nests? Of course, she's referring here to the typical platforms that you find for ospreys in, in the United States. Uh, so please comment on that. Thank you. Uh, well, regarding the last question, uh, we don't know. They have kilometers of forest, so they will probably use their... I mean, they will probably nest where they want. Uh, we could use these platforms maybe here in La Pampa, where we have some areas of flatlands where, where you don't find trees. But I think it's not... Uh, it, it couldn't be a, a relevant conservation tool for this particular species. Regarding protection, <clears throat> the species is uh, protected across the, the different countries. But the thing here is that law enforcement in the field is very weak. I mean, there is no... In Argentina, for example, just a few provinces have uh, provincial rangers that may control uh, if the people kill them or not. So they are protected, but there is no legal enforcement at all on their protection. In fact, for example, what in the work we did with the solitary crown eagle here in La Pampa, uh, when we started to work, start, the work started was started by Jose Sarasola and Maxi Galmez, that are two researchers from our center in the late, in the early 2000. And at that moment, uh, they heard frequently of eels that were killed. And after years of going to the field and talking to the people, our perception is that this situation has changed a bit. 
So now most people know the species and most people know that the species is in danger. They now have information that this eagle kills snakes and not lambs, or at least not frequently lambs. We don't know if sometimes they, they kill lambs. And this has changed the attitude of the people. And in these areas, I mean, the police just goes and, and control if you are hunting illegally deers or wild boars, but they don't control if you are killing eagles. I don't know if, I mean, it's the, the social system is very different and the police, uh, I, I don't know how to say that, like the presence of the government to control and monitor these species is very weak. It's, it's nothing similar as it is in the States or in, in other countries in Europe. So we have to rely more on what we can share to the people and we'll, what we can educate the people than in persecution, for example. In persecution, legal persecution, I mean. I don't know if this answers... Yes, it, make, it makes complete <laughs> sense and actually uh, brings me to the next question. I just saw that that was from Pacific, Pacific Northwest Cage. He's very... A uh, keen photographer in our area, and she's been live here also on uh, with me. So it's very nice to have her again on the show. Well, she was uh, she was asking a question actually about the, uh, the exactly about the educational program and the legislation. How do you actually do that? Because of course, as you said, most of these are are farmers, and uh, it must be very difficult even to go out there and and talk to them. So mm -hmm. so. Who does this? How, how is there a special education program for that? Or yes. Is that you just whenever you have time? How does it work? Well, with the Black and Chestnut Eagle, we are still starting with this part of the project. So in Colombia, Santiago uh, worked with a, a local corporation. Oh, he disappeared. So just hang on, please. Um, just hang on, please. Uh, we're going to get him right back. So just give us a chance. Uh, I'm just going to put an eagle there in the background. Uh, so I think I'm going to send him a new link. It can happen. Okay, I'm just going to communicate quickly with him. So just give me a chance. He's, this is where you have to be a little bit patient because it's live. I'm just going to write to you, lost you on Skype. And let's see if it's still there. Okay, okay. Um, I'll just uh, send you a new link. So just hang on. Okay, let's do this and send him a new link. Uh, let's just get this back on. Uh, okay, I first have to disconnect here. Start session. One second, let's just get this back. There we go. I'm going to send him a new link now. So just hang on, please. Copy. There we go. Okay, so ho hopefully we'll get him back in a second. <laughs> As I said, there's a lot of improvisation here, so I'm happy to just have your patience. Let's see if we can get him back again. So I see lots of your questions coming in, by the way. Hi, Terry, I've seen your questions. I've also seen the Kit Kat. Very nice to have you from Reading. I hope the situation, by the way, in Reading is a lot better now. Oh, he's just writing something to me here. Um, there, I'm trying to connect. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. Um, Oh dear, we have some problems here. Try this. Uh, let's try again. We're having a little bit of problems here. 
Oh, this happens. To, <laughs> this has has to happen during live shows, especially uh, over these distances. So just hang on. Oh dear. Uh, I hope he can get us back. If not, I'll try and get him in through Skype. So I, you know, I'll work my magic. Don't worry. We'll get him back. Um, ah, uh, I see him. Okay, back. There I am. Thank you. That's great. So sorry about that, everybody. So I'm just going to get myself out of the way here and put the pictures right back. That's great. Hang on. Um, it, um, Juan Manuel, are there any other pictures uh, or videos that we have specifically about the black and chestnut eagle that you would like to share? Or is that Yeah, lots of others. Okay, we... Right. Right. Okay, okay, very good. Hang on, I'm just going to get you back on the screen. There you go. Okay, so I know that's a bald eagle. That's not... Uh, <laughs> I just did that. <laughs> Wait a second. I'm bald, but not an eagle. <laughs> exactly. Okay, that's very good. Well, let me just get you on the screen quickly. I'm going to give you uh, two more questions here. So Terry, uh, Terry's question here is, have you considered initiating a breeding program? And she says, thank you for this great information, Dr. Grande. So Terry Green would like to know, is there such a thing as a breeding program for this bird? Uh, actually not. The, I think they have some birds in captivity in Peru and Colombia, but they are just a few. Um, and here in Argentina, we don't have, I mean, we have only one nest. We have found only one nest and we've been searching for the eagle now for years, four or five years. And we've seen the eagles in some spots, but it's, it's very rare. So actually to try to go out and capture birds for a breeding program, I, I think now is probably not, not the right moment to do so. I think we should focus now on on field research to learn a bit more of what's going on with the species. Right, and that of course brings the other uh, the the other question about funding. I mean, I know that's so difficult. Um, uh, what what type of funding? <laughs> Very you... difficult. Yes, yeah, so so probably your funding is as rare as the species. So I don't know what is rare. Your funding or the <laughs> or the eco. It must be yeah, both very no. difficult. Thankfully, uh, we have. I mean, now we have. Uh, economical crisis that is demolition our country. So we are in a really bad position, but fortunately with this species, we have uh, good contacts outside. And so, uh, for example, for both the solitary crown eagle and the black and chestnut eagle, we have uh, financial support from the Peregrine Fund for several years now. Uh, Maxi Galmes, for example, got his entire PhD covered by the Program Fund, financial support. And now Santiago has also support on the Program Fund. So for these two particular species, we are okay. I mean, if we had more money, we could do more things, but we cannot complain. It's worse with other species that are not so uh, handsome, <laughs> if you say so. Uh, they they don't have uh, they are not they have no uh, charm charm these eagles have and so there is is more complicated yeah yeah thank you very much and then there's a, another question here from Osprey Mama by the way thank you for the donation Osprey Mama very kind of you other than humans what are the other threats to this species of eagles. So she's, she's uh, talking about the black and chestnut eagle, obviously, right? Yeah, we, so. don't, we don't know actually of, of any predators that uh, actually kill the eagle, but uh, we have a camera trap put at the nest in Argentina. And we saw, uh, I don't know the name in English, don't remember. It's like a huge weasel. It's a giant, oh, the great weasel or something like that is the name. I should I should look for the name in English. I don't remember, but it's like a huge weasel. 
huge. It's the largest weasel species in the world, I think. And so they could probably kill the, the eagle juveniles or the adults. It's a great climber, goes up the trees like I'd love to do. <laughs> and this is probably the main, this is probably the main predator of, or the main potential predator. Uh, in the areas where these species live, uh, it could also get in touch with the RP eagle or other large eagles, the, how it called, the ornate hawk eagle or the black ornate black hawk eagle, I think it's. And also there is the, I don't remember the name in English, the Didelphus is the, the genus. Right. You have also there in, mm -hmm. in North America, in Southern North America, this marsupial that climbs trees and... Yeah, well, we have, of course, the raccoon, which is a big danger, but I don't... Yeah, think... well, we have raccoons here, ah, right. too, mm -hmm. not the same species, mm -hmm. but I'll check now the... Of the name, that's okay. Uh, yes, I'll, 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 I'll give you a small break uh, if, if you want to check. But it's not just... the main, I think, the main predators. But ah, that, opossum. But that, the ah, the opossum, of course. Opossum, of course, it's clear. The opossum. Course. That's interesting. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, so opossum. let's move. Uh, let's move to the other. Uh, just put you there in the corner now. So let's just move to the to the second uh, eagle. That's very interesting. The charcoal eagle mm. or the crowned solitary eagle. Uh, if I, I hope I got the picture correct, because yeah, these... that's the correct one. Okay. There we are putting a satellite transmitter on a juvenile of this species. Right, go ahead, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. We've been working with this species for several years now, uh, since I think 2011, no, 2012, I think. We had, besides the cooperation of the Peregrine Fund, we had the cooperation of the William and Mary College, I think is the name, a university college in Virginia that has supplied us a transmitter they were putting on bald eagles across the eastern migratory corridor and they refurbish transmitters and they send to us and so we have banded up to now I think more than 20 juveniles of the species and this have this gave us uh, critical information on the threats that this species is facing as I said before the eagle uh, was heavily persecuted in the past because people thought it fits mostly on on lambs. People were scared that the eagle could kill small goats or, or lambs. And we found, thanks to video monitoring of the nest, that the, and thanks to diet analysis, that this species fits mostly on snakes. And in the area where this species lives here in, in La Pampa, for example, the most common snakes are poisonous snakes. So the species is actually cleaning, if you like the word, the field of dangerous snakes for people and for cattle. So now they feel the eagle more like an ally than like a threat. But even though some of these juveniles were killed, were shot, uh, I think you can also you can always find uh, I don't know uneducated people that that just shot the eagles, and then we also found that uh, electrocution in power lines is a, a very dangerous threat to the species too, and also they died uh, drone on water reservoirs for cattle. So now we are working in trying to fix this, these issues. We started to work with the regional government to, to get support for changing dangerous electricity pylons. We didn't have uh, very good luck with that. They have just modified a few. They have uh, taken some steps. So in the future, the new power lines will not be dangerous for birds, apparently, but uh, it's harder to, to get them to work to fix the ones that are already settled up. 
So this is one of the main threats for this species now. And in our field area, uh, we have reduced persecution a lot, but it still happens. But outside our area, the, the eagles are shot. And this eagle, contrary to the black and chestnut eagle, moves a lot. The juveniles we ban here in La Pampa sometimes goes up and north, uh, I don't know, three, 400 kilometers easily. They cross the border with other uh, provinces. In these neighbor provinces, they also die um, by the same reasons. We found electrocuted eagles. Uh, eagles that we banned here were electrocuted in other provinces or drowned in other provinces or shot in other provinces. So it's clear that these are the main threats for the species. And now we are trying to, to spread the word through the political authorities to try to put them to work to fix this, these threats. Okay, so whilst you're talking, can I show some of the movies? But you have to, I will need a little bit of help from you. Is that the correct movie that I'm going to show? No. <laughs> ah, no that is a, a Harpy Eagle. Oh video my goodness, that, this is Harpy Eagle. Oh my goodness. Yeah, okay, that so, comes after the Black and Chestnut Eagle video. Okay, so I will need a little bit of your help, unfortunately, to see which of these. Uh, hang on, let me just uh, bring this over. You can't see this at the moment. The screen. I can send you links if you want. Yeah, hang on. We'll we'll manage this. Uh, one second. I just need to get things correct here. Uh, now that isn't working anymore. That is great. So that I just have to reconnect. One second. Hopefully this works. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so. Um, can you tell me which one of these videos it was? So my apologies. Yeah, it's... yeah. with the solitary crown eagle would be the, you have to go low. Low, okay, uh, I will. I will. Lower. Oh, okay. This are. This one? No, this is the... Yeah, yeah that's a falcon. Castro. That's a falcon. Exactly, that one. This one, this is it. Okay. This so is the second part. You can oh, go to the other one. Okay, let's go to the part. first part. I got it. Okay, hang yeah, on. I don't know. If... We'll do, I'll go to the first part. It's this one, right? Yeah, exactly. Okay, got it. Thank you very much. Okay, let's expand that. I'll go on YouTube with this and then we will expand it. Let's do it. Okay. okay. And well, we are working with that. Uh, we are analyzing data on dispersal of these species. So we hope to, to have a more profound knowledge of the effects that habitat changes are having on these species as well. We know that in certain provinces of Argentina, the species has uh, lost most of its habitat. If you, when you saw the map of La Pampa, there was a green, uh, a green extension that went from northwest to southeast. It was forest. In the past, this forest went up to the north in a in a wide uh, belt across several provinces in Argentina and now has almost disappeared from many, from many of them. So we feel that probably the seagull, uh, well, we know it has disappeared from some of those areas and we are worried that it can keep disappearing from the other, from the areas that are now uh, threatened by, by these uh, forest clearings. This is the, the juvenile of the of the eagle. And this is Maxi. This is one of, of our PhD. He finished his PhD last year. He worked with the eagle for eight years, I think. Ten years, sorry, eight to ten years. He's probably one of the ex the, the guys that knows more about the species. These are the typical forests of our area. They are like mesquites. It's a uh, a thorny tree, not very high. This is the adult, you see, is gray. It has this, uh, the crown, the, these feathers on the back of the head that gives, gives it its name. And I don't know if you have any particular questions about 
Yes, they do. I'm just looking at the questions. I'm glad you're asking. So uh, I'm going to put two. That's an amazing species too. It looks so beautiful. Well, uh, yeah. I will start at the end with Margaret 59 because she said, could Dr. Grande perhaps give us an idea of the size of these species of eagles? Maybe, well, of course, compared to our bald eagle, maybe to an osprey or something that they can relate to. Please, uh, yeah, no, they are larger than the osprey and smaller than the bald eagle. But they are large eagles. They can have, uh, the, the solitary crown eagle can have two meters of wingspan, for example, and the females can weigh uh, more than three kilos. And the black and chestnut eagle as well. It's, apparently it's not so heavy as the solitary crown eagle, but it's like more stockier, more robust, more robust eagle. Right. And the other question, I'm going backwards now, Gentleman Ghost again, any cooperation, that's a great question here, any cooperation organizations of cross-border, so he's talking about between Brazil, Uruguay, Chile, and so on, of mm. uh, looking at endangered species, because obviously they live right along the Andes and so on. I mean, not this, yeah. but others, yes. No, we are working with, uh, well, in, with the Black and Chestnut Eagle, we have contacts now with researchers in, in other countries. Uh, in we are we have now contacts in Colombia, Ecuador, and Peru, and we have another contact in Bolivia. But it's a guy that is studying the the condors, so it can help us. But it's it's not uh, the black and chestnut eagle is not the focus of his of his research. And with the solitary crown eagle, we actually don't have any contact. I mean, there is uh, there are a, a group in Brazil that has done some work, but just with with a few breeding pairs. So we are actually the only group that has done uh, large scale work with with these species. Right. So that is sadly lacking, of course. So there's not very much going on. Exactly, um, and, and it's a pity because. Mm -hmm. The threats in other areas can be different, and we really don't know what's going on there. Yeah, and Susan North is asking, hi, Susan, very good question here. I wish there was more respect for these type of eagles, and in fact, all of them. She's saying, is there such a thing as a rehab raptor facility anywhere? That's what we're used to here, uh, which you probably know, right? Yeah, um, uh, no, we have, uh, but for example, we have a problem here in the province. Uh, they don't have any rehab, rehab facilitation center. So when a, an eagle is shot and uh, we have to, to take it to Buenos Aires, which is 600 kilometers from here. Oh, look, this is one of the videos we, we've done. He's covering the egg. One of the problems that have both this eagle and the black and chestnut eagle is that both only have one fledgling they only lay one egg and only can raise one fledgling per year. So this makes both species more uh, prone to extinction because uh, the probability of recover is much lower. For example, in, with the osprey, you can have two or three fledglings. Or with the golden eagle, you can have even four sometimes. So they can recover much faster. These species have uh, a very well a very low reproductive rate just one fledgling per per breeding attempt and um, they also have a very long dependence period well here you can see this is a poisonous snake uh gerard ice coal this these videos have helped us a lot to to engage with local people in the areas we show the videos, we show them that they are killing snakes and not lambs. And this is a, a critical issue on the conservation of the species. <clears throat> and so, well, uh, regarding the rehab centers, we have, there is one, the biggest one is in Buenos Aires. And there is another, there are a few more in some provinces, but the place where the more professional vets on birds are is in Buenos Aires, which is, as I said, 600 kilometers from here. Well, this is absolutely fascinating. I thought, you, you know, my question, of course, is if they grab a poison snake like that, uh, which which is probably lethal for us. Um, yeah, how do we didn't do know it? what happened with them. <laughs> how do they do it? <laughs> uh, they just grab it. I think they smash their heads with the, 
what is interesting is that they uh oh, i don't remember the word in english they throw it no they when they eat it they did oh, oh they shake it right or something or, or do they, they do... yeah they eat it and the entire snake with the head the the teeth the poisonous teeth and everything you know that is unbelievable yes. so yeah i think there is uh i i, I haven't read uh, any research but uh, it seems that the the stomach fluids are very acid so they uh, degrade the poison but I, I don't know what happened if the snake actually bites the, the leg of the eagle you know well that's fascinating so they can break down the poison in some way or another this is uh, that's incredible. exactly that's that's absolutely that's absolutely incredible uh, well, th well, that's that's great information. I'm just wondering if there are any other informations because oh, any sorry, <laughs> any other questions? I mean, could, there's, this is such an interesting discussion. What we can do if there are no other uh, questions, we can uh, because we are we are here for nearly an hour, uh, Juan Manuel. What we can do is, uh, if you want to, you can think of three questions uh, ab about. Uh, something interesting it can be difficult questions we'll ask them to the audience and they can call in and they can win something okay so okay uh, i think you'll love this as an educator <laughs> so, okay we can make an exam yeah, of the could, things i've said exactly 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 so okay. so so um i'm going to put in the phone number at the moment let me see the dial in number there's my dial in number so i'm just going to put my let me just put this on hold uh so there we go um so that's the dial in number hopefully it'll all work because i got so many knobs here uh, let, one second i'm just going to get my phone up so just hang on, please. And I'm going to get my phone up here. Okay, yes, it it uh, it, it probably should work. So um, what I will do is um, we'll wait for someone to call in. Um, and let me just, I have to link the, one second, I just have to link the audio too, which is not linked at the moment. So just give me a second. Uh, audio source. Okay, here we go. Yes, that should work. So, yeah, so um, I would like to um, invite you all to to dial in and Juan Manuel, uh, come up with your first question, please. <laughs> okay, do you want an easy one or a more tricky one? <laughs> well, let's start off with an easy one and then we really get, get okay. more difficult and the last one is going to really be difficult. Let's do it that way. Okay, okay? well, they are not there just to see if the people is... Are, are paying attention. <laughs> Carefully or not. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay. Uh, if they can give me, uh, uh, let me see. Well, which which is the yeah a common characteristic of the two eagles we have seen uh, today. What is the so what is the co like a common denominator, right? What is the yeah? What what so so you've seen? Okay, let's go again. You've seen the so black... you see the both eagles, and uh, you see okay. They both are common in that. Okay, so we're talking again about two rare eagles: the black and chestnut eagle, as well as the charcoal, also known as the the crown solitary eagle. Crown solitary. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, what is a common characteristic? for both eagles other than that they're endangered i mean <laughs> exactly well this could be one yes but you yes. already answered yes so of course but but sense. i think you're probably looking more at at the bio biology here right you're you're looking yeah. at, at 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 something that's characteristic of the biology okay well go ahead just call in and um and give it a try and then you can win some beautiful pictures so let's see um i should be able to hear you if you call in so we'll wait a bit We'll just wait a bit. It's getting very late for you anyway. It's ten, nearly 10 o'clock in, in Buenos Aires. Ah, it's okay. We also we usually have dinner at that time here. <laughs> that's, a, that's very good. Okay. Okay. Does anybody dare call in again? What is a common uh, factor or some, something that you know between these two eagles, the black and chestnut eagle, as well as the crown solitary eagle? What is there something you could think of that both eagles have in common? Um, you could probably name some things, but uh, I, I don't exactly know what uh, Juan Manuel is looking for, but we'll find out. <laughs> uh, 
Um, no one's calling it. Okay, that's right. That's right. Yeah, they, 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 that's fine. Okay, thanks, Kevin. I got, I got it. I got it. Yeah, that, that should work. So nobody dares to call today. <laughs> nobody wants to win. <laughs> you know what? In that case, uh, you can put a more difficult question in because if two people uh, fall in, come it with question number two, which is more difficult. So whilst we have question number one, come it with question okay. number two. Okay, it could be which is the color of the eyes of the black and chestnut eagle? Ah, yeah, beautiful question. The first one that we saw, the black and chestnut eagle, remember the one that's quite dark at night, so uh, th that, that was taken at night. So uh, what is the color of the eyes? It's a beautiful color, by the way. Um, yeah. I won't give you any more hints there, <laughs> but we have we have actually looked at it. We have actually looked at it. Yes, yes. So that's the second question. No habla español. That's bad. I was only saying that's no excuse. <laughs> that's no. Podemos hablar en español. No hay problema. <laughs> no problema. You hear that? So we can talk Spanish too. It's fine. Yeah, so. exactly. That's not an ex excuse. Unless yes. they only speak Chinese that I don't. <laughs> okay, nobody seems to be calling in today. That's interesting. Is nobody daring to call in? I think, I think they're all. Um, well, you don't have to be afraid. I mean, goodness me, we all make mistakes. It doesn't matter. This is for fun. Okay, so, so in the meantime, you can Google it anyway. At least the second question you can That's Google right. for one hundred percent. The first one maybe is a bit more difficult to Google, but the second one you can absolutely Google. Yeah, but it's tricky. The second one. The second one is tricky, yes, yes. So that's the eye color of the black and chestnut eagle. Okay, yeah. that's the one that we saw in the dark. Okay, um, they are there. They are shouting at each other. Go for it! Well, nobody. <laughs> they don't want to go. <laughs> oh, it's so funny. <laughs> Usually, we have quite a lot of callers. Uh, Kevin is telling me there's nothing wrong. This is, he's helping me a lot with the with the technical side. So there's nothing wrong with the phone. It's just that nobody's calling in because uh, it's just the way. They are scared. They're scared. They're scared of your incredible knowledge. I think that's <laughs> <laughs> that's that's what it's all about. All the pe Amanda saying with all the people here have won before. No one is calling. I guess. Well, Amanda, give it a try. <laughs> Or Osprey Mama, give it a try. Jackie, where are you all? Susan North. I'm just going to look at my all my friends here. Let's see where you all are. I'm going to look at all the chat list here. Uh, who else is there? Kathy is there. Nice to have you, Mac Lady. Gentleman Ghost. How about it, Gentleman Ghost? You are a smart one. Why don't you call in Margaret59? Let's see who else is there. Pacific Northwest, Kate. How about you calling in? Wouldn't that be wonderful to have you? on here so dana has given some thank you for by the way for the danish very kind of you dana steel is there very nice so don't be afraid you know just call in cameron the asteroid dragon oh my goodness there's so many of you uh, lisa lisa belen b l b e belen says scared Maybe is they right. all have your pictures already they are all scared yeah they all have my boring pictures that's right <laughs> that's probably it Oh gosh, they are now they are calling each other. It's like who's going to jump in the water? Okay. <laughs> oh my goodness, we've never had this situation before where nobody's calling in, which is funny because you know it does it really doesn't matter if you get it wrong. It's not about that. It's uh it's just about the interaction. It's so much fun to have you all here. So <laughs> Well, you know what? I'll give go on with the third question. They can really fire themselves. Now comes a very difficult one. In the meantime, so. uh, no. The third is uh, which are the the main preys of both species. Yeah, that's the first one. The main the main characteristic. The second one was the color, the eye, and we have three questions usually. Uh, uh, the first was a common character between the two. Yes. The second, the color eyes, and the third could be which are the main preys. They feel ah, them. yes, yes, yes. So there, there's our predator. Which are the main prey? Well, that is easy. We've just seen the video of the one. Oh, here comes a call. Oh, so one go. second. Let's just see if we can. Let me see if I can catch this. Hope I can do this. Hello? Hello? Oh, yeah, this often happens that the first time it doesn't work. So just give it a chance. It's, it's, it'll work the second time. I don't know why it is like that. Yes. 
Let's try again. And now the phone won't answer. Hello? 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 Oh, hi. With whom am I speaking, please? This is Mac Lady. Mac Lady, that is fantastic that you're calling. That's great. Yes. I see that all the regulars are holding off and nobody calls. So nobody I'm calls. Wondering. Mac Lady, tell me, where are you located, <laughs> first of all? <laughs> where are you located? I'm in Jacksonville, Florida. Oh, beautiful Jacksonville, Florida. My goodness. So you got it very hot there, right? Oh, my gosh, yeah. Oh, my no. gosh. Okay, so, uh, you know, you are very lucky because you can actually choose among three questions because nobody dared, dared to call it. Do you want me to repeat the questions or do you want to answer a specific question? What would you like to do? Um, I will answer... Number two. Sorry, come again. You will answer. Sorry. Um, I will answer question number two. You're going to answer question number two. So question number two was, what is the color of the black and chestnut eagle? That is question number two. So please go ahead and give us the answer. Okay. Um, uh, the answer is yellow orange. Yellow orange is the answer. Let's see what Juan Manuel thinks about that. Uh, the adult has yellow eyes, and the juvenile? Yes, he's correct. He says, uh, because you can't hear him at the moment, he says, yes, the adult has yellow eyes. You're absolutely right. Can you say the juvenile color? Take a good guess about the juvenile. So the juvenile has a different color than the adult? Yes, that's correct, which is not unusual. Think of, uh, you know, that's not unusual at all. I mean, think of our bald ego and so on. That's very... Uh, that's that's, okay, so what, what, what is I'm your... Gonna, okay, I'm going to guess and say the, the eaglet is got black eyes. So she, her guess is the eaglet's got dark or black eyes, whilst the adult has yellow eyes. Well, it's not dark, it's gray. It's oh, it's, it's gray. gray, okay. Yeah. Oh, gray. Well, I, 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 what do you say? Do we give her the, the prize or do we not? What is? What yeah, is, I think she deserves it. Yes, yes. She <laughs> thinks you deserve it. Uh, he, sorry, Juan Manuel thinks you deserve it. I completely agree. You know, thank you so much, Mac Lady, for calling in. So please leave your name and we were going to dial for the, for, we're going to um, run the lottery wheel later for the photo. Thank you so much for calling in. So that question number two has been answered. So again, the, okay. the juvenile. Okay. Yeah, thank at, at, you, Dr. Sassi. Thank you, Dr. Okay, thank, thank you very much for calling. I appreciate Thank you. So, Juan Manuel, let me just ask you. Oh, oh no, here comes the second one. You see, now here we go. Here we go. Now they are all. Yes. Now, they, now they're all calling in. That's one. Oh, my goodness. What's going on here? Everybody's calling in. Wait a second. Uh, I'm trying to answer. Sometimes it won't answer. Uh, so, Hello? Hello, who's there, please? Hi, Christian. It's Amanda. It's Amanda in Texas. Hi, Hi Amanda. How, how are you? <laughs> I'm doing good. I didn't think it was going to be able to work. It was like the hold message was on for a while. So I think that's, maybe that's why I'm almost calling, too. <laughs> Oh, very good. Well, it's wonderful to have you have you here. So, um, Amanda, question number two has been answered. You may have heard that, right? Yes, so, yes, so, the so, golden yellow eyes. Yes. Yeah, you got it. So which question would you choose? The question number one, which is what is... Can you, re uh, could, you, could, you could you say them again? Of course I can. So question number one was between, again, the two eagles, the black and chestnut eagle and the, or the crowned solitary eagle have some common characteristics. Can you name one of them? And the third one was, can you name a typical prey of each of these eagles, we just saw a video of one. So, which question would you which question would you like to answer? There, I guess there there's similarities, maybe. Yes, go ahead. There's similarities. Go ahead, Amanda. Go ahead. Okay, <laughs> they're similar in size, and uh, they both kind of uh, prey on the same things, and they both only lay the one egg, which is. Is that, is that good? <laughs> I think, Juan Manuel, what is your, uh, how do you like that answer? Did you hear it? Well, it's okay. It's, it's okay, okay, he says. He's yeah. okay. They don't no, feed on the same prey. Yeah, he says, prey. They, okay, he says they don't feed on the same prey. That one is not uh, correct. However, 
Yes, they go are on. similar in size and they both yeah, similar lay in one size egg. and they both lay one egg. So you got two out of three correct there, which which is good. So congratulations for following. Pretty good. <laughs> and that was pretty good. I mean, that was very good. Uh, well, thanks so much, Amanda. That's wonderful. And thank you, by the way, for always for, your, right, way, for your generous contributions. I so appreciate that. that. I, I enjoy coming and watching very much. Sorry, I not, haven't missed, missed a little bit more than I usually do lately, but... Oh, that's so nice to have you. Thank you so much and have a wonderful evening. All Thanks. right. Have a good okay. weekend and have a good weekend, everybody okay. else listening. Okay. Thank you. Fine. Bye. 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 Okay. So one more call. So that was a great answer. So here we go. I'm you, gonna, go. you have I'm all, gonna, all calling at once. I'm going to try now and hopefully, hopefully we get this one correct. Now, I, I don't know why the phone is not answering. Okay. Here, I think we've answered now. Hello. Who's there, please? Hey, Christian, it's Osprey Mama. Now, what a surprise. <laughs> it's Osprey Mama. She's also from Florida. So we got a second here, a second caller from lovely Florida. It's wonderful to have you on the show. So Osprey Mama. Uh, so here comes your questions. It's actually uh, going to be question number three, because Amanda answered question number one. Then Mac Lady answered question. Question number two, that's right. And so question number three, do you remember what it was? I can repeat it. Something you know. about um, what do they prey on? Maybe exactly. Something that they prey on? Exactly. And they're different. We know that. We heard that. They're different. They're not the same. So this is quite okay, a well, difficult I'm one. I'm guessing, but I remember us um, him saying something about chickens. Saying and, something about chickens. Okay. It's, and he said sometimes they do lamb. And I know they eat the poisonous snakes. Yes, and and which Those one does the poison? <laughs> yes, you're right about the. Okay, let's start with the poisonous snake. So, which one was the poisonous snake? Um, do you remember which one it was? Not an oh, easy Christian, one. Christian, really? No, no. Okay, well, I'll give you. I'll give you the names. No, I don't. Uh, I don't. I don't expect that. Don't worry. So, I'll give you one. Uh, the first one was the black and chestnut eagle, and the second was one was the charcoal eagle or the crown solitary eagle. I don't blame you because I, it took me a long, long time to to learn these difficult words too, uh, because we've never heard of them. So, do you remember which one of those it was? Uh, was it the first or the the second eagle that we saw that 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 took the snake? Do you remember that? Okay, one? the second eagle is the one. Yes, that correct. Eats the poisonous snake. Correct. So you got that one right. Okay, so so you got we got we we got the snake part right. That's correct. Now the question is, what does the black and chestnut eagle feed okay, on? Okay, so that was the first one. Yes, that's that the first one. That was the first one. eagle. Okay, that's the one that eats the the farmers kill them a lot because it eats the chickens and and uh, I can't remember what other animal, but I know sometimes sheep or lamb or something like that. <laughs> Okay, well, let's see what our expert says to that, Juan de Manuel. Did you hear? Okay. Did you hear? Yes, the... I heard. Uh, it was right, the Chaco Eagle and the Black and Chestnut Eagle eats chicken, but not lambs. That's Once correct. What, what very good. It eats chicken, but yeah, not man. lambs. That was superb. So yeah, you actually, good. you're very good. You, you answered it completely correct. Well done. <laughs> Fantastic. Yay! Yay, you did great. So tell him thank thank you very much for everything that they are doing with these Yes, species. yes, yes. I completely agree. We, we 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 all thank you very much, Juan Manuel, for the great work you're doing. I completely yes. agree. And thank you so much for your kind donations to uh Osprey Mama. Oh, That's no really problem, coming. Christian. All right, y'all take care. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, take care. Thank you. Okay. Bye bye. Thanks. Wow, that was very educational. That was really great. So what we're gonna do yeah. now, I'm gonna Blend out the so no more callers, please. So we we have done that now. So what I'm going to do, just give me a second, is I'm going to get this wonderful new wheel that Jenny has designed. It is there is some gentleman there who is going to spin the wheel. Uh, so I'm just going to blend this in. And let me just put you there in small. Can you see that? You should be able to see it. <laughs> so here's a wheel. So Juan Manuel, what you have to then say is just stop. I'm going to spin the wheel and the first, uh, so I'm going to start spinning it. Now is a beautiful animation here. I don't know who that gentleman with blue eyes is. It can't be me. I don't have blue eyes. So it must be some very handsome man here uh, spinning the wheel. So uh, just say stop at some time. Okay, and stop. 
Okay, there we go. Oh, this is beautiful. So this is um, the the first one is was Mac Lady. You see, I remember the, this time. I remember everybody. Mac Lady gets a beautiful picture. This is a bald eagle, of course, down on my beach here. Very nice. Um, uh, playing with water. It's a beautiful large size. So very nice that you won that. Congratulations. So we're going to go on spinning, and now comes the second one. Okay, stop. There you go. Oh, this was taken in Alaska recently in February. Beautiful, uh, a beautiful uh, sailing eagle along the along the shore. Very difficult scenes usually to take. Not in Dutch Harbor where it was along the Aleutian Islands. Really beautiful. So this is the second one. Very nice. Okay, so let's spin again. Stop. Okay, so Amanda won the second one. Uh, so the third one here is Osprey Mama. So there's your juvenile. That I think is a two-year-old flying straight into the camera. Really beautiful capture. A very wide wingspan here. So there we go. So we have actually completed it. That's absolutely fantastic. So let me just blend myself. In. Let me just blend you in and I'll put myself in small somewhere there. I'm going to put myself right in the corner here. <laughs> <laughs> so that's wonderful. Well, Juan Manuel, that was a great show, really. I mean, that was one of the most educational shows for us because I think uh, we learned so much and uh, it's it's just incredible the work you're doing, you know. Uh, um, Thank you I very don't, much. I don't know if there's a way, uh, if you, you're very modest, I know, but if there's any way with sponsorship or so, uh, give uh, Nicole, please. Thank you very much, Nicole, by the way, for organizing this. I really think this was absolutely fabulous. Uh, so give us the link if there's any way we can help. Uh, we can always put out calls for donations and so on, which we happily will do. Okay. Yes, I, I'm not sure how how we could do that. I mean, if you make a call and the, somebody wants to, to give us something, okay. then we can arrange how to to send the money here. I mean, anything will be appreciated because we are always needing. Yes, right. Or, or I mean, we are working with. Um, many more species than the, these two eagles. Right. And for those species, to get money is much more complicated. It's much more. It's much so more complicated. Of course. Any help is is welcome. Well, great. Well, thank you so much, uh, Juan Manuel. So everybody's thanking you. I can see it from the comments. It was absolutely great. Uh, really wonderful. So I'll talk. I'll just give me two minutes. I'm going to just end the show, and then I'll I'll yeah. talk to you a bit more. So I'll be right okay. back. Oh, well, thank you so sure. much again for. for I just being... wanted to, to thank you for the time you gave Absolute me, and, and I hope Absolute. Absolute. it was uh, interesting for the audience. I'm quite sure it was absolutely fascinating. Really, it was. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Well. So. So here we go. Though so that was uh, Juan Manuel, Doctor Juan Man Manuel Grande uh, from from um, Porta Rosa in in uh, Argentina. Really fantastic. Uh, what, what we learned today was really incredible. So thank you for all joining us. So I would also like to thank my team here, Sasha, of course, Kevin for all the technical support. Belladonna, I haven't seen for a while, but I hope she's well. And Jenny, of course, for doing this beautiful animation that we just saw. So let's keep let's keep this up. Let's keep on uh, doing the shows as we as uh, as we can. I think it's incredible. Um, I'll talk to Nicole. We'll arrange the next shows on. So really, thank you so much. Uh, by the way, uh, thanks for tuning in. So that's the final one. Uh, donations, uh, thanks for all those who donated. Really appreciate it uh, for all of you. So I wish you a wonderful uh, weekend. And I hope you certainly enjoyed this. I did. And um, I'll see you soon again. So thanks a lot and goodbye. Thanks. <laughs>